You're looking live at the chapter one review with me, your host, Mr. Goldman. Question one, a probability of 0.39 is, uh, and as a quick refresher, look at this. This is our little number line here. Uh, impossible at zero, or zero percent, or some fraction. Uh, equally likely is 0.5, 50% or one half. Certain is one or 100%. So. Uh, all of these numbers we can write as either a decimal, a percent, or a fraction. Uh, it looks like all of these are going to be decimals. Uh, 0.39 is between 0 and 0 0.5, so it is going to be unlikely. Point zero zero 0.005, this is, it's not impossible, it's very small, uh, but it's going to be unlikely, right? Because it is between 0 and and 0 0.5, and 0.57, this would be, if we go back to our number line, uh, this would be like right around here probably, right? It's just a little bit greater than 0.5 because that's the same as 0 0.50. Uh, so this would be likely. <clears throat> Next standard, the spinner has nine sections. What is the probability of landing on red? I know it's hard to tell with this, but two of them are red. I think it's this one and this one. Uh, so since there are two red and nine total, it's two ninths. And this is, by the way, theoretical probability because I'm not spinning the spinner. A bag contains 10 red apples and five green apples. Uh, a little hint here. It's asking about theoretical. Uh, this, all the information in this problem, you can answer both theoretical and experimental, but just this first sentence, this is the information you need for theoretical. It tells me about the contents of the bag. Uh, how many, uh, let's see, red apples, probability of red. There are 10 red uh, out of the total number of outcomes. Uh, there are 15 total apples. So the probability of getting red is 10 15 You can leave it like that because it's probability. I'm okay if you don't simplify. Uh, you could also simplify to 2 thirds. <clears throat> also, just leave this as a fraction. You can answer it in a percent or decimal, but fraction is going to be the easiest way. Uh, okay, so now, same scenario. Uh, I can ignore this first sentence because I know that that's theoretical, and now I have experimental. Uh, I pull out an apple at random 20 times, so I already know that's going to be my denominator. That's how many times I did the experiment. I replaced the apples each time, which is important. I got 14 red out of 20. So my probability is 14 twentieths or 7 tenths. <clears throat> Mrs. Shaw has a class of 35 students and only 11 of them completed their homework. If you choose one class, one student from the class, what is the probability they did not do their homework? Well, remember, this is uh, the probability of not equals one minus probability they did their homework. So probability of not is 35 over 35, which is one, minus 11 of them completed, 11 35ths. So that is gonna be 24 35ths. So 24 35ths. <coughs> Number eight, uh, we'll write the following fraction as a percent round to the nearest tenths place. Okay, uh, this one, I, I kind of, you know, I know this one, right? Four twelfths, I can divide by four over four, which is one third. Now, I, I just happen to know that that's 33.3%. Uh, it says round to the nearest tenths place. This is actually, of course, 33.3 .3 repeating percent, but I can round to 33.3. On the test, I would accept both of those answers. That's fine. Um, say I didn't know how to do this, uh, and I'm, you are allowed to use a calculator on this test. Hopefully, you, can you see that? Uh, numerator is 4 divided by 12. Fractions are just division problems. I get that answer, and now this is a decimal. To go from decimal to percent, I multiply by 100. 33.3 going on forever. Rounded because Here's the tenths place. The next number in the hundredths place is below five, so I'm gonna round down. 
to 33.3. <clears throat> Write the following fractions as a percent, two thirds. Sorry, <laughs> I just said the mistake that I wanted you to avoid. Uh, this is not two thirds, this is three halves, right? Um, we, this is one and a half, right? So I'll show you on the calculator again. Uh, three divided by two is 1.5. Uh, that's as a decimal to go from decimal to percent. We multiply by 100, I get 150. This is 150 percent, right? Uh, three halves equals one and one half. Right? If you get three points out of a two point quiz, you have gotten extra credit. You have 150 percent. All right, following fraction as a percent, seven eighths. Uh, just for fun, we'll do this long division style. So seven eighths is the same as seven divided by eight, right? Which means the seven goes in the house, eight goes outside. Uh, eight goes into seven zero times. Uh, eight goes into 76 times. No, haha, <laughs> woohoo, eight times. Oh boy, it's been a long day. Eight times eight is 64, remainder of six. Eight goes into 60, seven times. Seven times eight is 56, remainder of four, bring down the zero. Eight goes into 40, five times. Five times eight is 40, remainder zero. Uh, so seven divided by eight is equal to 0 0.0875, uh, and I, I'm going to multiply this by 100, uh, 0.875 times 100, and that will just move the decimal over twice, and we get 87.5%. There you go. Number 11, what is the perimeter of this shape? I think you can read that. It says 9 inches by 3 inches. Uh, I'm going to do uh, 2 times 9 uh, inches plus 3 inches, uh, which is 2 times 12 inches, which is 24 inches. Right. Hopefully the review, or the perimeter is review. Right. <clears throat> area of this shape, area is length times width of a rectangle. So my area is nine uh, inches times three inches. Nine times three is 27. Inches times inches is inches squared. You have to have the units correct. Whatever its area, it's gonna be square inches. All right, perimeter of this shape. Uh, the challenge here is ignoring the three centimeters because that's not on the outside, so that's not the perimeter. So we're going to do 5 centimeters plus 5 centimeters plus 4 centimeters plus 4 centimeters, which is 10 centimeters plus 8 centimeters. Notice we're just adding, so I'm, I don't have to adjust the variable. Uh, 10 plus 8 is 18 centimeters plus centimeters. Oh, ah. 18 centimeters. Number 14, what is the area of this shape? Uh, this is, it, it looks like two triangles. You might be tempted to do it in two triangles. I'm just gonna do this in one. I'm gonna say this entire thing is the base, right? And this three centimeters is the height. So the area equals base times height divided by two. So area equals eight centimeters times uh, three centimeters. And we're going to divide that by 2. So that's 24 centimeters squared divided by 2. So the area is 12 centimeters squared. Oh, sorry. Don't forget to divide by 2. That's Somebody's going to do that. All right. Perimeter of the shape. I rewrote the, the numbers here. Um, it was a little small. So the perimeter, I'm not going to add the 6, right? So for perimeter, I'm just going to add 7 millimeters plus 14 millimeters plus 7 millimeters plus 18 millimeters. Just add those all up. 
Uh, 7 uh, plus 14 is 21 millimeters, plus 25 millimeters, so the perimeter should be 46 millimeters. Let me do the area on the same page here. Area of a trapezoid is base 1 plus base 2 times height, all of that divided by 2. My base 1 is 14 millimeters. My base 2 is 18 millimeters. My height is 6 millimeters. I'm going to divide the whole thing by 2. So I have 32 millimeters uh, times 6 millimeters divided by 2. I'm going to simplify here. I'm going to divide the 32 by 2. Uh, so that goes to 1, and this goes to 16. And now I have 16 times 6, uh, which is uh, 96 millimeters squared, because I have millimeters times millimeters. All right. There you go. That's the chapter one review. Uh, if I made a mistake, woohoo! Uh, let me know, and you get 1,000 bonus points. Uh, hope that helped. Uh, be ready for the test on Friday.